Welcome back to our Teshuba study. So today, I'm going to take us into Ephesians chapter 6. Right where the armor of God is. Finally, verse 10. Grow powerful in union with the Lord. It's a very interesting verse. Grow powerful in union with the Lord. You know, it's not by might nor by power, not by my might nor by my power, but by his spirit. So go powerful in the Lord. We have authority as believers. We have much at our disposal. But most of us are very complacent. Most of us are tolerant and, and let's get along and let's just go easy. You know? Most of the believing lives that I look up to, and starting in this book, they weren't easy lives. They weren't tolerant. They were bold and courageous. And they called out what was wrong. And they spoke truth. We're at a time in history, remember his story, history, where we don't, have much time left to figure it out or to you know be tolerant or let's be nice there are souls going to hell so why don't we just get real and why don't we actually act and behave like we really believe what this says finally grow powerful in union with the lord in union with his mighty strength, his mighty strength. So when you're gonna battle, it's not in your flesh and blood, it's not by your might, it's not by your brain, it's not by your understanding, it's not by your knowledge, it's his strength. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive tactics or schemes of the adversary for we are not struggling against human beings but against the rulers authorities and cosmic powers governing this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm and then he goes on to tell us to pick up our pieces of armor and maybe tomorrow we'll go through the pieces of armor but today can we understand that we should be growing powerfully in union with him and that it is by in union with him and his mighty strength that we use all the armor and the weaponry that he provides so that we will be able to stand? See, we use his might, his strength, his weaponry so that we can stand, stand on the truth, be bold and courageous. Two years ago, going through teshuva like this, there were Hebrew words that he gave me to be strong, be bold, and be loud. That's still true today. So, the time is coming, and it's already here, when the spiritual forces of darkness are, man, they're ramping up. They know their time is short, and so they're really ramping it up. And our battle is in the heavenlies against these principalities and powers and cosmic rulers. That's according to the complete Jewish Bible. It's a great, great translation. But here's the thing. Sometimes, most times, these powers and these spiritual forces that we're battling in the heavenlies are either in or upon or behind human vessels. So while our battle is spiritual and should be fought with discernment and wisdom on his strength, his power, his weaponry, you must confront the human with truth and love and compassion, hoping that you penetrate through. So give the gospel before you rebuke a spirit. Give the gospel give the truth. So
so that their soul can be saved. Because see, ultimately, it's about eternity and it's about souls. That's it. That's tonight's. Be strong. Be bold. Be loud and courageous. Tomorrow we'll learn to put on the full armor. Maybe. Maybe we'll go back to Romans. I don't know. But it's not by your might. It's not by your strength. It's not by your brain. It's not by your knowledge. It's not by your understanding. It's not by your perception. It's not even by your, whether you're timid or not timid. See, courage, courage is shaking in your boots and doing it anyway. Men aren't born courageous, but they step out to do the right thing. God says for us to, he says, I've already told you, old man. This is in Deuteronomy and it's in Micah. What does the Lord require of you but to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? What are the two greatest commandments? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, trusting confidence in him, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. If you had a demon behind you, if you, had, if you were demonized or you had under the influence of, of a bully and you weren't behaving your way, wouldn't you want someone to love you enough to tell you the truth about the kingdom of God? Be bold, be strong. Be courageous. All right. See you next time.